morning. <laughs> such an honor to be here. So often in networking events such as these, people ask, what do you do for a living? So I would answer, I'm an engineer in algorithmic trading. And one of the most common responses I get are, huh? What trading? <laughs> so today I want to cover what exactly is algorithmic trading, how that might be relevant to you, and how does data science and computer science transform the trading industry? But first, a quick story about me. For the longest time, I've been living in the closet. But all that changed three years ago when a coworker of mine invited me to join my team Goldman Sachs in a charity bike ride called Cycle for the Cause. It's a three-day bike ride from Boston all the way to New York. And the proceeds of it helped fund the LGBT Center's AIDS prevention and treatment program. So over the course of all three days, I get to meet a lot of LGBT members from my firm that I didn't even know existed. And seeing how proud and authentic they're living their life gave me a lot of inspiration. And most importantly, I get to meet incredible allies from my firm that are super accept accepting and are very supportive. And that gave me tremendous courage. So on the third day of the bike ride, when I went back home, I took a bottle of wine. I went over to my best friend's house, drank half a bottle of that wine, <laughs> and then I came out to her. That Christmas, when I went home for the holiday, I came out to my parents. One of the hardest things I've ever done, but also the most liberating. <laughs> the year after that, I signed off the bike ride again with my current girlfriend, I did the bike ride, and she put together the most delicious PBJ sandwiches, handing it out to all the riders. At this point, I'm fully out at work, and I make incredible progress living an authentic self in my personal life. And all that was made possible because of an incredible LGBT network from work. Needless to say, I'm very proud to be working for Goldman Sachs, who is very focused on diversity and inclusion. For 15 years in a row, Goldman has earned top scores in the Equality Index by the Human Rights Campaign. And our CEO, Lloyd Blankfrank, he's known to be the first American CEO who supported gay marriage. And last week, one of my teammates in India helped overturn the legislation that banned homosexuality in India. Yeah. So if you're interested in uh, the best place to work for LGBT, yes, we are hiring. <laughs> But enough about me, let's talk about algorithmic trading, or algo trading for short. So what exactly is algo trading? It's the use of data science and computer science to automate trading decisions. By automating trading decisions, not only is it more efficient, right? we can actually trade a lot more and, and it will scale up the volume, but by also using machine, we're able to process a lot more data inputs and making processing complex data inputs. So that means the trading decision can be made smarter. And of course, machine can react to market conditional changes instantaneously. That also means trading decision can be made a lot faster. How does algo trading relate to you? Well, you may not know it, but you may be already using algo trading indirectly. If you invest in 401k, mutual funds, or if you use robo-advisor as a lot of the millennium says, chances are the portfolio managers are utilizing algo trading whenever they need to buy or sell securities to rebalance the portfolios. And the reason why they use algo trading is because it gives them a much better execution performance on the trade. And that performance on the execution directly impacts the performance of your portfolios. So what I just described is a form of algo trading that's known as the execution algorithms. It doesn't decide what to buy or sell. Your portfolio manager decides on that. But what it does is it takes a trade that was given to them, and it will try to get the best execution to maximize performance. And it's doing it by minimizing the market impact, reducing trading cost, and managing trading risk. So let's go through each of them one by one. In terms of managing market impact, so imagine that big trade that the portfolio manager has to trade. It's like a giant piece of rock. And that the market, it's like a bucket of water. What's going to happen when you drop that big rock into the bucket of water. Flash. You're going to create a lot of disturbance, and meaning that you're going to also disrupt the market, end up getting a really bad price for your execution. So what you'd rather do instead is take that big rock, 
break it down into small pebbles, and then drop it into the water one by one slowly to minimize the disruption. That way you can get much better execution. So algo trading essentially is using computer science to programmatically breaking down that big tray into much smaller chunk and then schedule that tray to, um, to trade in, in a different intervals. And we use data science to come up with the optimal size of how much to trade at a time as well as the right frequency to trade in order to manage the market impact. Secondly, algo trading helps minimize trading costs and it's done by making decisions when to trade what price to trade, and where to trade. So for a, for a portfolio manager, they may want to decide if they want to target, say, the closing price, as a lot of the mutual fund does, or maybe the average trade price of throughout the day. So with using computer science, we can program a schedule that can either trade more volume towards the end of the day to target closing price, or to split out the orders in different in even intervals so that you can sample different price points for the day in order to target the average price. In terms of deciding what price to trade, we use data science to, and also machine learning to project what is the price going to be in the next uh, horizon. Right? So with that information, we can then decide, should I trade now if I know the price is going to be good? Or should I trade later if I think the price is going to come towards me uh, later in the, in, the, in the time? So data science also helps us decide how aggressive should I be pricing my order. If I have a high, high urgency to trade, I may be willing to cross the bid ask spread and get the order done. Or if I afford to wait a little bit, maybe I can only pay half the spread or no, no spread at all. So help, that helps us make a decision of how we want to price the order. And finally, in where to trade, um, orders can be traded in different, different venues, and each of them has different fill rates and also different fees that are charged by the exchange. So using data science, we can run experiments to see which venues are optimized that give us lowest fee while give us the best fill rate. So we can create heat maps as well as uh, venue, venue ranking able, in order to able to maximize where to, to trade. In terms of managing the trading risk, imagine you have a big orders and you may not want to show your full hand that you have a big orders. Right? So let's use an analogy. Say I'm a collector of Beanie Babies, you know, those really popular stuffed animals back in the 90s. Right? And I have hundreds of them, and I want to sell them on eBay. If I list all hundreds of them on eBay, what's going to happen? The chances are not a lot of people is going to bid on it because there's no high urgency. They know there's a lot of inventory out there. But instead, if I only list one listing at a time, right, and then once it gets sold, I would list another one. That way, the buyer might have a little bit of urgency because they don't know if it, the, the listing is still going to be there tomorrow or not. Right? It creates a little urgency, so they're more willing to bid for the, for the Beanie Baby. Similarly, that's how we can use algo trading to slice up the order in a smaller chunk, and then once it got executed, we can automatically replenish and, and trade again. Another way that algo trading is used is to prevent bad player in the market to gaming the orders. So using the eBay example again, imagine I'm a buyer and I really want to bid for that Beanie Babies, and the seller somehow knows that I really want to, um, to, ex uh, to purchase the Beanie Babies. And what I can do is they might actually pretend to be another buyer and try to create an artificial bidding war, bidding war with you. And what ends up happening is you end up paying overpriced for what you want to trade. So what we can do using data science is to calculate a fair price for the product and then use programming logic to make sure we never trade beyond what we call the protected price. And also algorithmic trading can be used um, to monitor the market's behavior so that if we detect there's irregularity in the markets, we can instruct to pull out the orders, therefore preventing us from being gained. So those are the three main aspects of algorithmic trading. Minimizing market impact, reducing trading costs, managing trading risk. Over the years, algorithmic trading has transformed the trading industry. Study has shown that algorithmic trading has made the market a lot more efficient. Stocks are now quoting in four times the quotes um, than when, it first, when algo trading first became popular in 2003. And also, the bid ask spread, the cost that you usually have to pay to get transaction, has been reduced by half. What that means for you and I is, nowadays when we trade, we can do it easier as well as less expensive, all thanks to algo trading. 
But of course, it also has disadvantages. Algo trading has made the market a lot more complex, create a lot of interdependency that we may not fully understand. For example, in May 6, 2010, what's, in for, what's known as the flash crash, the Dow Jones industry index has dropped nearly 10% within a 30 minutes window. Now, many argue what's caused the initial drop, but one thing that everybody agrees on, algo trading made it worse. Because when the market was trending down, all the algorithm pick up the signal, the market's trending down. So what happened is it, it sends out a lot of sell orders in order to stop the loss. That exacerbated the drop of the market. But good and bad, algo trading is here to stay. Since algo trading picked up popularity in 2003, at that time, it was only 15% of the market. Nowadays, it's at 90%. That means only 10% of the trading is done manually by human. We're going to continue to see a lot more automation in the future. As machines are getting faster, algos are also getting faster and smarter. One of the biggest use cases of artificial intelligence is actually algorithmic trading. It's, this is number two as a, the, the use case with a projected seven billion revenue opportunity. That's double the amount of the revenue opportunity of using AI for navigation in self-driving cars. Our artificial intelligence is gonna make algorithms smarter uh, by helping it better predict how the market's gonna trend. Um, that way it's also gonna give us a better performance. So I hope my talk today helped demystify what is algorithmic trading and get you interested in it. Um, we are hiring, so if you're interested, definitely talk to one of our representatives in the GS booth or check us out on the website. Thank you.